Hey guys, it's Brooke here from The Vintage Gardener. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, so tonight I'm gonna go over a seed haul with you. I'm gonna show you guys all the seeds that I got for Christmas from my sister and mom from Baker Creek. Uh, so I like Baker Creek seeds because they have a lot of heirloom varieties, particularly with their vegetables, but I haven't done that particular seed order yet. Uh, but I'm just gonna be showing you things that some of them I'm going to be winter sowing, some of them will all start in March, but I just wanted to go over with you. Uh, so the first thing is Gomfrina. It's the mixed uh, Gomfrina. Uh, it looks like these are going to be, it said it, it's going to be white, pink, and rosy red. It looks white and purple, but we'll see. Um, I love Gomfrina. They take, they are slow to start. And when I put them out last year, I'll be quite honest, they look so feeble in the ground, but then they, they got to a certain point and they just got really huge. And it's great because they kind of bloom later in the season. So it's kind of nice, uh, especially in fall, because they, I mean, they carried on through fall and they were like gangbusters. Um, and it was just absolutely beautiful to have that color later on in the season after most things had died down. So then I got stock. It's called a Chanter Alto Red. And so this is an early flowering variety. Um, so it's going to be, it will first of it's cherry red and it's going to be 32 inches tall. So uh, they say transplant or direct seed in, in place in early spring. So let's see, is this frost? This, they're saying this is frost hardy. So I might try to winter sow this because that will do really well. And then I got some salvia. So I got salvia swan lake. And so this is obviously a perennial. Uh, it's perennial. Uh, well, actually, it's not obvious because some salvia are. <laughs> I think there's some of that are annual, but this is a perennial one. And it's uh, hardy between zones four and eight. It's snow white flowers and it gets between 20 to 27 inches tall. Uh, so this is frost hardy. So that's another good one for winter sowing. I think with some of these varieties that I've never used before, I think what I'm going to do is I'll do half of them winter sowing and the half in, and half of them indoors just to make sure that I actually um, get something because I've never tried to winter sow. Yeah, with the stock, what did I do? I think I did a late winter sowing in the greenhouse. So I've never done a true winter sowing. So I think I'll do half and half just to see, just to make sure that it does what it's supposed to do because some plants, like for example, um, what was it that I did? Cornflower, everyone says, oh, it's frost hardy. It wasn't, so I'm just gonna experiment. Um, then let's see, I got some snapdragons and this one is called a uh, cherry twist snapdragon. Now, this is one that I tried winter sowing. It does not work well for early winter sowing. It works better if you try sowing it in March. That's what I found. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. But I think this is gonna be absolutely beautiful. It's 20 to 24 inches tall and it's bi-colored cherry, red, and buttercream. So that's gonna be pretty and I think it'll make a lovely a cut flower. Um, then I got some Yarrow Love Parade. Now Yarrow, I've grown Yarrow before. I've winter sowed it. It's this one I know I can winter sow. Uh, so this one is perennial from zones five to eight, and it's one and a half to two feet tall. Uh, so, wow. Okay, so this one says a standout climbing yarrow with extra large flower clusters that fade and blush several lovely shades of pink throughout the season. Ooh, climbing. Okay, I can't wait to see this. I mean, you know what, now I'm looking at it, yeah, the heads do look a little bit different than typical. So, wow. Okay, I can't wait, that's gonna be great. Um, I also got another stock, it's called Asa no Kagayaki. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, and so this is Frost Hardy, and it describes it as being hazy apricot blooms which are reminiscent of the sunrise during the golden hour. And it said it has a gorgeous clove-like fragrance, fragrance and it's a single stem variety and requires a chilling period. And it should be planted late spring, winter, early spring. So this sounds to me like this one will be really good for winter sowing. 
Um, they sent me free seeds for carrots. You know, it's kind of weird because I know some people who've done Baker Creek seeds and the free seeds they got were flowers. And I'm like, why do I always end up getting vegetables? I mean, I like vegetables, but Baker Creek, give out some flowers, yo. <laughs> okay. Uh, so then I have some more stock. This one is vintage brown. Ooh, this one is... I guess I need to start this one sooner rather than later because this one, is, I guess, blooms in 90 to 111 day. Uh, so transplant or direct seed in place in early spring. Per, prefers full sun. It's frost hardy. Let's see. Is this... I'm going to assume this is an annual. Hmm. Huh. Uh, I will definitely plant this one in March just to be on the safe side. Yeah. Okay, so then I got uh, a pop, some poppy. I got a lot of poppy this year. Last year, I didn't grow as many because I had all those seeds that I saved, but, and I like threw them out. Uh, none of them sprouted, interesting. Well, in the promenade beds, none of them sprouted. And I think it's just because we didn't get enough water so this year i'm definitely winter sowing them um i'm gonna try an experiment by freezing some of them in some ice cubes and then putting them in the cups and see if that helps uh so i got uh the pur uh the purple peony poppy and so this looks like it's gonna have a really large bloom on it and it's supposed to be great purple so that's gonna be great um oh I have a marigold called sugar and spice. You know, last year I grew uh, the <clears throat> Kilimanjaro white and I also did mission marigold. I love the mission marigold. Uh, the Kilimanjaro white was kind of small. The head on it was not as big as I thought it was gonna be. Um, this one I think is gonna be pretty. It says it's big blooms like dollops of freshly churned butter. And so it's beautiful blooms that are two inches across. So I'm guessing it's like this. So we'll see. Um, so this is one I have to start indoors, but I'm looking forward to having more of that. Uh, then let's see, I got Scarlet Peony Poppy. And so it's, they're fully double and it's three to five inches across. So they say it stuns in this landscape, which I can totally see that, um, or in arrangements. So it's, they stand three to four feet tall and will readily self sow. So I'm gonna be winter sowing these. I think for some reason, I thought I got some last year from, I thought I got some from from seed savers with when I went to Longwood, but the, the whatever poppy seeds I got from Longwood just did not really seem to do well last year. Okay, so then I have a black peony poppy. And so this is uh, intricately ruffled blooms with shades of obsidian to burgundy. And it'll be three to five inches across. And I can't wait. Um, let's see how it, I think the purple peony. Yeah, I guess in terms of color, this one's definitely darker, but we'll see. And I'll do is I'll put one purple and one purple section and the other one in the other section. Okay, I'm going with Sissinghurst White this year again. Uh, this time I'm actually gonna put it out in the, um, the promenade gardens. And so this one only gets two to three feet high. And so um, I do recall it having fairly large blooms. Um, I'm gonna be winter sowing these again. Once again, I'm going to be doing the ice cube thing. Oh, I got Flemish Antique. Uh, this was is probably one of my all-time favorite poppies. Um, when I first created the Parterre Garden, I did these. Oh, the blooms were just, they were magnificent. So um, I didn't get any last year, even with all the seeds I had saved. But this year, I wanted to make sure I had some. So doing that. Um, I have cream peony poppy. I grew some of these last year. I'm trying to remember where I put them. I don't know. Last year, for whatever reason, the poppies really didn't do that great for me. It wasn't like the first year. Like the first year, the poppies were just like gangbusters. I don't know what happened last year, uh, but I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I need to master 
whatever is going on with my poppies. I don't know if maybe they're just, maybe they did so well the first year because there wasn't anything else in that spot. And now that I have other things in it, it was a little bit too much competition. Anyway, I got to figure it out. If Even if I have to move some stuff around, that's what I'm going to do. And then I got uh, Poppy Rose Feathers. Um, this kind of reminds me of the uh, the Chima Family Heirloom that I grew last year. But, um, and I, re I did like the shape of it. Um, so I'm hoping that this is going to be, you know, better than the Chima Family Heirloom because that the heads on it were small. Uh, the heads on these are supposed to be three to four feet. It's supposed to be three to four feet tall and four to five inches uh, wide, which the Chima Family Heirloom definitely was not. Um, then I have Salvia Rose Rhapsody. This is a perennial salvia. It's hardy from zones three to nine and it's a blush pink and it gets 18 to 24 inches high and it says that the stunning pink flower spikes are top notch for cutting and floral design work. They kind of look that way too. So this will probably be nice on the Christmas tree because I'm doing another botanical Christmas tree next year. Uh, let's see, then I have some asters. I got Matsumoto Blue. You know what, I had some asters last year and I don't even know what happened to them because I don't think I actually, I can't even remember if I put any in the ground. Um, I really don't what happened, know what happened to, because I think I had like a red Matsumoto aster and I don't think I saw that one bloom at all last year. So I'm going to have to work on that. Um, so this one, it um, blooms within 90 days and so it's a, it's a semi-double. Um, it's 26 inches tall and it has sing, a semi-double blooms reaching two inches across. So it's perfect for pots, borders, and more. So it's a sow in place in spring or start indoors and grow for several weeks. So this is going to be one of the ones I start in March. Um, I got another poppy called Supreme. I think this is so pretty. Um, so it has, it says, describes it as having tropical high summer toned and semi to fully double petals. And it says citrusy hues from grapefruit to tangerine. Ooh, that's going to be pretty. Um, so I'll be winter selling that. Uh, then I get another, uh, white poppy, um, called, uh, Swans Down Poppy. And so it blooms after 98 days and it's got frizzled frilly white petals and it's a blizzard of five inch off white blooms that will blow in the breeze atop three foot tall um, plants and it, this one dates back to the 1760s. So that'll be pretty. Um, then I have Poppy Lilac Pom Pom. I have not had good success with these. Um, I got them from Swallowtail Seeds. I'm gonna try Baker's Creek. I'm not really sure why I get such low germination. I think what I'm gonna do on them to make sure that they germinate is I'm gonna be putting them in the little um, ice cube trays and freezing them, and hopefully that does the trick. Um, then I got some Gonfrina. I'm doing Mandarin or Orange this year. I saved some of my red seeds. Um, I did start these and they sprouted and I'm trying to remember what I did because I didn't put any in the ground because of user error. I don't remember what I did, but I inadvertently killed them. But the red ones were wonderful and I think the orange ones are going to be great too. Uh, then my next free seed is the lettuce Merlot. Um, I'll be winter selling that. And then last but not least, I have frosted salmon poppy. Um, this is a pink one. I did have some of this bloom this year. It actually did pretty good. So I'm going to um, grow more of these. I think in the pink section, what I'm going to do, I definitely am going to pull out that sweet pea and then dig it up and try put it somewhere else. And I'm hoping that that's going to give me some more space. Um, this year, one of the things I want to work on doing better is that when things are, have bloomed and died, I need to just go ahead and start not cutting them down to the ground, but at least cutting them back so that other things to kind of grow in and fill, you know, fill in and that sort of thing. So that's what I'm going to try to do. So anyway, guys, that is my Baker Creek haul thus far. Um, I have a geo seed um, order and there's some other seeds that I've been buying here and there from various places. So I'll do that in a different video. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.